All right, so I want to take a minute and talk about mounting the camera, the, the parts that are involved. Uh, this is a little bit different on the M5 than it has been on the M10. Um, we found with smaller cameras, uh, sometimes they're not as rigid where they mount as the bigger cameras like the Epic are. Epic has a super robust machine body. When you mount to that on one side, it basically becomes one with the gimbal and allows you to tune it up fairly easily. With smaller DSLRs, the mounting points aren't as secure. Um, to get the performance that we wanted out of the M5, we decided to redesign the camera cage such that it mounts to both the top and the bottom. Um, and what this does is it, it really locks the camera in the cage and it makes sure that anything the Mobi tells the camera to do, the camera does exactly. And this allows us to control the camera to a higher degree of accuracy than we would be able to if we only mounted it on one side. Um, so the critical parts to get this thing mounted in the camera cage, we have an adjustable camera rail for the top, it's the smaller one. We have a uh, hot shoe adapter for that, for that mount, which allows you to clamp into it. And then we have a adjustable camera plate for the bottom. This is a little bit wider than the M10 one, uh, the M10 camera, adjustable camera plate. The reasoning for that is similar. The bottom of the DSLRs uh, often isn't as robust or rigid as some of the bigger cinema cameras. So in order to get the performance we needed, we, we widened this uh, to give a nice stable platform for the camera to sit on. So I'm going to show in depth um, installing all these guys. So the this little machine piece that goes in the hot shoe adapter, you just slide that in, fits right in there. I think I flip it the other way. And then it allows you to mount uh, the top adjustable camera rail right to it. It's got, it's got two, um, slot, two holes to fit these M3 by eight flathead screws so that they f the important point is they go in these holes and they fit totally flush and that's what allows it to actually slide onto the adjustable camera plate. So I like to get those screws fitted in there. They're very tiny, can be kind of fiddly. And then you'll use the two millimeter driver we include. And I get it seated in the screw and then find the hole and just get it to grab the first couple threads. Same on the one in the front. You want to just grab, have a very loosely tighten each thread so you still have room to adjust and find the other thread. And then once you do have those, I just tighten down uh, to finger tight. So now we've created this nice stable platform on the top to hold the camera totally rigid. So there, we include two length of uh, quarter, quarter inch flathead screws that also fit totally flat within the camera plate and allow it to slide right onto the adjustable platform. Uh, the important point on this plate is there's two thread, uh, drilled tapped holes, threaded holes in the front of the adjustable camera plate. These allow you to mount our follow focus mount, a rod mount accessory if you want to have a focus motor controlling the lens. Um, so that need, they need to go in the front. And then you'll, there's various mounting holes along the length of the camera rail. You'll want to pick the one that allows you to have a good amount of this adjustable camera plate at the CG point of your camera. And if you need to figure out the CG point of your camera, you can pick it up on both sides so that you can see roughly where it balances. So on this setup with 70D with the 16 to 35, it's balancing roughly right on the flange, right on the lens mount. So when I go ahead and install that, just keeping in mind the two threaded holes go to the front and that I wanna make sure I have adequate connection there. I'm gonna pick the third hole back uh, the reason I've chosen that is when I tighten that down, I'm going to have a nice full engagement on the bottom of the camera, the camera body. This camera rail is going to be, uh, have as much footprint as possible to be rigidly attached to the camera. I'll cinch that guy down. The other thing you need to pay attention to is since there's only one hole on the DSLRs, you want to make sure that you get these two camera rails on straight. Um, you want the center line of the camera rails to be along the axis of the lens. So I'm going to cinch down on that. So this is a camera that's now ready to mount into the Mobi. If we get it, uh, these guys mounted on top and bottom, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work great. It's going to allow us to get easy balance and then also allow us to run the stiffness settings really high and get great performance.